Libra. Hello everyone, it's great to see you and the channel here is new so I'm going to have to ask you to resubscribe so I can get these videos to your inbox. And before we start the forecast, let me just update you that your monthly recorded audio scopes are up and also your daily scopes. And thank you for all the great feedback on that. It is for a limited time free for you to go listen every single day. So just go to the website here and you can see what is up on a daily basis. Let's go to your forecasts. Hello Libra, this is your November forecast for 2013 and it is good to see you again as always. And this month it is going to be a financial month for you where your focus, your, your, your um, spotlight is going to be on crunching numbers to see how it's all balancing, how you can tweak it, how you can improve it, what money is coming in, what money is going out and to see also those aspects of your worth not just financially but also how you see yourself and your own self-worth is going to be pretty much pinpointed here this month now we also have the new moon and it's not just a new moon we have a new moon eclipse and that just makes it that much more powerful uh, it gives the punch of a couple of new moons there so it's going to be an important time here on the Third, November 3rd when the eclipse takes place that is the time to put the intentions down as we always mention but to put them down in this area of your financial situation how can you improve how can you expand what can you do to visualize and attract a better income source for example um, this is where your new moon would behoove you the best now also I'm seeing that your emotional side is going to run very deeply because both the Sun and the new moon and also Mercury is moving passing through the sign of Scorpio and Scorpio is those deeper layers of our inner self our emotional self and so you might just feel that things are a little bit deeper more real or more close to, to heart mind and spirit at this time uh, especially now when Mercury is going through there, you might be reflecting a whole lot on your sense of self and your sense of self-worth and uh, also issues of the past because Mercury retrograde brings us to the past. Uh, you might be looking over where you've been, uh, what you've achieved, what you've done, what you haven't, what you could do now when Mercury goes direct again, uh, which it will on uh, November 11th. And uh, some of you might even have some financial issues returning to you because this is exactly the area where Mercury retrograde will be uh, taking effect for you. We have Venus, which has been cruising through your third house of uh, communication. So you might have been very lighthearted here in October. Uh, and here throughout November, you still have a week left of this. Uh, Venus will be here in this very chatty communicative house and also uh, out and about uh, catching up with neighbors socializing uh, also more communication with your siblings might have been more uh, appropriate or in the picture here in October uh, but you have it here until the fifth then uh, Venus will be moving into your fourth house which has to do with home and family roots and so forth and it will be cruising there for the rest of the month so up till uh, the 5th, you will still have this very light-hearted, chatty, socializing uh, spirit out and about. And then we have also the Sun and Saturn having a very important talk on the 6th. Uh, this is a serious talk for you. This will be between, let me see, uh, da, da, da. it will be, yes, your second house once again. It will be your financial situation. So you might be talking to uh, somebody in authority, you might talk to a banker or maybe a real estate agent or maybe even talking to uh, somebody in a home mortgage or insurance company or it might just be your spouse too, uh, speaking a little bit seriously about financial uh, situations and issues. Nothing to worry about though, what it is going to do for you is going to help you solidify and ground. Uh, some of you might even be talking to uh, perhaps a uh, 
supervisor or an employer about a raise, uh, if you're having a review on this day at work, well then that should prove to be good. Um, just because you're, you're also getting some very good energies coming in from your career house from Jupiter which is up there and beaming down to the second house of money and income. So Jupiter is still looking out for you, uh, but she will go uh, retrograde on the 8th. So you've been expanding and growing in this area over these last few months. However though, when Jupiter goes retrograde, she's going to go to sleep for another four or five months. Uh, but she's so abundant, she's so huge, and she's so generous that even when she's retrograde, it's not like she's going to turn off fully the faucet. It's just that you won't feel that that help and that support is going to be there as flowing as it has been. It's going to be a little bit toned down here until late winter. But let's look at love and romance. We have a couple of dates to look at here for it. We have the 7th and the 8th. We've got uh, both Venus and Mercury here in a sextile to Neptune. And Neptune is our ideal. It's our dream. It's our vision, you know, and uh, it will be communicating as well as it's going to be sensing, feeling, and sharing. So for you, this is going to be in the area of um, your, your fourth or your sixth house. I see how this is going to uh, also be shared as far as communicating and not just feeling it. So don't be afraid to share what it is you're thinking. Maybe your partner is waiting to hear something there. We have uh, Mars and Saturn. You had a good talk there earlier. Uh, now it is uh, on the 6th, here on the 9th. Mars is going to come in right behind it and kind of shore up or support to uh, whatever was mentioned there a little bit earlier in the week. Uh, Mars is all, you know, focused, dynamics, it is active. And I think it just wants to reconfirm whatever it was we spoke about a couple of days ago now in fact is going to take place, take action. So good time to follow up on the 9th and then moving into the 12th here in Libra. Well that's the lucky day of the month. We have the Sun and Jupiter, they're trying and for you this will be between your 2nd house and your 10th house. So something about money and worth and value at this day here should be really good news coming in for you. Neptune is going to be moving direct on uh, the hmm, 13th and uh, Neptune is our uh, source of inspiration. You know, that's where we go to when we need to brainstorm and think in new terms and pull down new visions and so forth. So for you, if you felt that that was a little dry here lately these last few months, well, you're right. Uh, Neptune, uh, when retrograde, doesn't really act to inspire that much, but you'll see your creativity coming up here. And for you, it, this is what it's going to affect you in your daily life, your day-to-day -day, uh, daily life and routine, because this is the area where Neptune is cruising in your chart. Then we have also Uranus, your seventh house, uh, currently still angling, you know, in a square to Pluto. And it's cresting now. It's been in effect for some time. You know, we're, we're over three years. We're going to have this back and forth square before it's done. But we have the exact square. And it's starting here on the very top of the month in November. And for you, it's between uh, the 4th and the 7th. So it's between your home, your residence, where you live, how you live, uh, your past, how you see yourself, your inner essence, your core. And uh, your partner being uh, Uranus here in the seventh house, there might be some indifferences or some differences that may not have fully been spoken about. You might have had a round or two of it, but then, you know, to uh, mm, avoid creating any kind of uh, ripples on the water, sometimes we just suppress, you know, and Pluto's really good about suppressing. But see, then your Uranus comes along and Uranus doesn't care about suppressing. Uranus wants to separate. Uranus divorces itself from those things that no longer has a good purpose. Okay, so if you see that there's some issues towering up here at the very top of the month, well, don't fear it. Just look at it, recognize it, honor it, and respect it. Because yes, there might be some patterns here uh, that can be uh, removed 
just so that you can find yourselves in a new place. See, Pluto wants to renew and regenerate anything, and it's trying to regenerate your home life. Uh, this is where Pluto is at. And Uranus needs a little bit more space, it needs a little bit more room. It might be you, it might be your partner say, I need a little bit more room, I need a little bit more space. And then so be it. Don't fear it because that can create like new issues. If you jump to the conclusion, what does that mean? You want more space? You know, it doesn't necessarily mean a separation or a divorce. What it means is space. Um, more time for individuality. Maybe he or she is needing some time to, to go through some inner processing of their own. Um, <clears throat> and this could actually revive uh, the whole energy between you. And this is more so, I'd like to say, for those of you who are married rather than those of you who are dating, you who are dating, you can also come to hear this or experience it too, of course. But it's more the committed relationships that's tying into a home-based property. This is where those things are going to come up. But I see the talks are good because this is November 1st and it's going to linger for a few weeks. So it's not going to run anywhere. These planets move very slowly. But on the first one, things are going to crest. Uh, Mercury is well aligned to Mars, so communication is good. It's honorable. The Sun and Pluto have a good aspect, so it's like both are listening and trying to find how to tweak and uh, transform and that's what Pluto is all about it wants to transform uh, so so those talks are good it's just work with the energies don't work against them and don't jump into any kind of uh, defense because that's not going to do anything uh, understand that this is a process this is what's helping you grow it's like a growing pain kind of thing so that you guys can be stronger and even much more better in the future now Venus is moving out of this area of communication and out and about running errands, moving into this area of the fourth house with family uh, and this intensity that's going to come here on the 14th. So you will see that whatever started off there in the beginning of the month is going to come together because the two of you are going to figure it out. Uh, I see you doing the dance with it if you wish. Uh, look for the 12th because it's such a happy time when uh, the Sun and uh, Jupiter comes together. We spoke about that, that that might enhance your financial area, uh, which it could. But what it's also doing is enhancing your sense of self, okay? Because the Sun here is in the second house. It's in Scorpio, so you, you, you've been emoting and feeling very deeply. And now this transformation is now coming in aligning up to your home and then up to your partnership. So you can see like this whole domino effect taking place for you. Fourteenth is a little bit of a difficult time only because uh, there is a square to, to uh, Uranus. Uh, this is the same time when Venus is uh, uh, conjuncting Pluto, which is very passionate, strong and intense, but it, it's also squaring uh, Uranus. This is going to bring something on the plate that you started here at the top of the month. You and your partner, relationship at home, your spouse, space wanted, needed. Uh, Uranus might uh, have a, a second dig at it, uh, just to kind of test the fabric of who you are and what you're made of in your, your partnership uh, to see if it could take a little split. You know, maybe you'd go off and do your own thing and. Uh, that with your partner but do it yourself or maybe your partner will want to go and explore and do something without having you along so but but I see that yes as these new patterns are starting to take shape and form it might give you a little anxiety you know Uranus can give anxiety but at the same time I'm seeing how this Venus that's feeling a little bit shaken is still being anchored and this is the beauty of it because that very same day that something is going to give, it's anchoring down with Pluto. Uh, and so, to me, that tells me that trust. Trust right now. Trust the foundation of what you have together. What is good will always remain good. And, uh, you know, take a leap of faith right here and see that your relationship can take this because it will behoove both of you 
in the end. When you're happy, your partner's happy. If this is you making these changes, well, let him or her know that if you can have this extra space, you'll be a happier person and he or she will get the benefit of it. If it's your partner coming to you with this, uh, you know, bless his or her heart and give them your, your uh, blessings to go and explore what they need to do. Uh, he or she will love you more for it, okay? So, so don't hoard right now. Time to trust. Then we have on the 19th, right after this little testing of the fabric thing, Venus and uh, Jupiter will come together. They are in an aspect where they're trying to balance out what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Did we do this? Did we master it? And you will see exactly where you are. And then right behind it on the 21st, the sun is going to move into Sagittarius and it's going to be out of the money house. It's going to come into the communication house. You being a little busy back and forth. And uh, it will take over where Venus here this last month uh, has been uh, transiting and it will follow up on it. Okay, so it, it's all good. It's all good. So, hey, listen, uh, Libra, this is pretty much what we have for you here this uh, month. Uh, just uh, pay attention to the, the, the new moon eclipse on the third. The full moon for you will be the eighth house of money, other people's money, joint. Uh, tax returns, uh, the, the, the royalties and commissions. You may see that that's going to come and give you something uh, here on the 17th. Remember that Mercury's retrograde until the 11th. Neptune is going to go direct on the 13th. Hopes and dreams moving forward and then Jupiter going retrograde on the 8th. So whatever you can con conclude up to the 8th will behoove you. And then you're just going to have to trust yourself a little bit more when it comes to faith, because Jupiter rules faith. Now you're going to have to have faith in yourself. Uh, and then, uh, yes, do listen to your moon and rising sign, as always, just to get a little bit more insight in which other areas you may be affected by these very same transits. And then also, <coughs> here uh, Libra, do remember to subscribe. So that I can get you back on the subscriber list as we recreate and rebuild this channel. And I'll see you next month. Bye now. Okay, so let me walk you through how you're going to find uh, your daily scopes and how to listen to them, download them. It's actually very simple. You go up here to the address bar and you type in zeitgeist.com. That is the home page. When it comes up, you go to your daily scopes right there. And you'll see you have your daily scopes right here. Now the ones that are activated, you will see that they are a little darker here in pink. And I add in as we go along. And these are free. It's a promotion until November 15th. So what you want to do, say you want to go to the 12th, well, you click on the 12th here on this page. And up comes here. And you will see on the right-hand side the daily scopes right here and you just go to your free download now and you can check out other dates too if you want to go back in time and if something special happened well go check that out you know and see what happened that day but say you want to download here October 11th you go to free download it will take you right here you put in your email address I'll put mine here you go submit And here is your daily scope right here. It'll say download and it will download directly to you. You open up with your default uh, player. I have Windows Media Player. Click OK. Up comes your file and you will be able to listen to it immediately. It's just waiting here as it's uploading that file. And why is it taking a little bit? Let me just do that again open. There we go. There's the file and it will start playing here immediately and you can just listen through it and it goes they're probably mainly between five to eight minutes. This one here is five minutes but yeah so you can listen to it. You can go back. You can listen to another date. You can come back every day uh, it is a free thing for right now, and if you would like to uh, share this with your friends, go ahead and send them this uh, link that I have here on Daily Scopes. I made a mini URL here. 
and you can just copy and paste this oops right there and send that to your friends and I will see you next month <laughs>